Hello and welcome to the Engineering Circuit Analysis Tutor. In this lesson and in the following set of lessons that we're going to embark on, we're going to really dive in and get our feet wet with talking about inductor circuits and capacitor circuits. Specifically, we're going to be zeroing in on what we call the natural response of the circuit and the step response of the circuit. We're also going to be throwing around terms like transient and steady state analysis and things like that. So a lot of it sounds kind of complicated, but I'd like to just take a couple of seconds to kind of briefly recap where we've been and show you where we're going so that as we do this you know it won't seem like such a big big deal so basically what we have done so far is we have discussed all the techniques of circuit analysis with the resistive circuit networks we've talked about Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits we've talked about node voltage and mesh current we've done all of that stuff and then finally in the last volume of circuit analysis we covered uh, capacitors and the current voltage relationship with capacitors and inductors, the current voltage relationship of inductors. And we did solve some pretty simple circuits, we call them simple circuits, but they're, they're bedrock essential material for inductor and capacitor circuits. Most of the time those circuits uh, that we've studied before were really just trying to get you comfortable with realizing that for capacitors the current and the voltage are related by a derivative. And the same thing for for inductors. There, there are derivatives that, that come into play when you talk about the current and the voltage relationship between those parameters and capacitors and inductors. Now what we're going to do is begin to talk about, uh, we've kind of hinted before that you can charge up a capacitor or you can discharge an inductor because what you know, you're know you doing in those cases is you're storing energy in the capacitor and then later on you might be withdrawing that energy and discharging it back into the circuit. So that's something we've kind of uh, talked about before, storing energy at a capacitor and charging it up, so to speak, and then discharging the capacitor, so to speak. Those are things that we've talked about before. The same kind of thing can be said for inductors. You know, um, inductors, we don't say that we charge up an inductor, but essentially when we put current in an inductor, we're storing energy in that inductor in terms of its magnetic field. And then later on, we can withdraw that energy from the bank, so to speak, just like for a capacitor. So the only main difference between the two elements, inductor and capacitor, Capacitor. Well, there's lots of differences, but conceptually the big, big difference is that for capacitors we're using an electric field to store that energy between the plates of the capacitor, and for an inductor we're using the magnetic field that's concentrated in the coil of wire that is the inductor. We're, we're storing that energy in, an, in a magnetic field. So storing in an electric field versus storing in a magnetic field. But beyond that, conceptually, they're kind of very similar devices. We use it to store energy and withdraw energy. And the details are, are very uh, slightly different between the two, but conceptually, that's what we're doing. All right. So what we're going to be studying in the next several lessons is talking about charging up, for lack of a better word, those devices, or in other words, depositing energy, and then withdrawing energy. Now, one thing we need to talk about is a couple of definitions before we get really any farther into it, because you're going to be reading in your book and in your... Uh, lecture, whatever professor you're learning from, they're going to be throwing around a lot of terms that if you don't understand them then it, you know you kind of get scared and worried about it for no reason. So let's talk about these terms. We're not going to write anything down on the board because they're very simple things to understand but I want to make sure that you, that you have them and then on the next section we'll actually begin writing some circuits down and, and talking in detail. The first thing is when you're studying these things you're going to be hearing the word transient a lot. Think about that word. What does it mean to you? The transient. What does a transient mean? It means something that's over. It means something that's temporary. You know, a transient person coming through a city is somebody that's there and gone again. So when we talk about the transient response of a circuit, we're talking about what's happening on a short time frame. In other words, we might be charging up a capacitor and we might see the voltage relationship do something over a short period of time. After the capacitor is charged up, maybe we've, we're not changing so much anymore once the charging process is complete. Or for an inductor, uh, if you remember, an inductor is just a coil of wire. So, you know, in the transient, if we're dumping a lot of current into an inductor, we might see a current voltage relationship there. Um, for a short period of time that's going on that's not there after a long period of time. So transient, when you see transient, it just means something that happens over a relatively short amount of time. We're going to talk later 
exactly what do we mean by short period of time. We're going to define that. But for now, when you think transient, just think something that's over, you know, some trend, like a spike almost, something that comes and goes, and, and that's what we're studying. By and large, we're going to be studying these transient responses in a lot of these circuits as we go on through the course because the charging and the discharging process of these, of these devices really do take place over short time frames. All right? The next uh, definition I want to talk about is what we call the steady state response of a circuit. We're going to get into uh, the steady state response a lot uh, more in the next volume of circuit analysis, but I'm going to bring it up here so you kind of get an idea. The transient response of a circuit is what's happening on short time frames, you know, the charging process, the discharging process, things that happen over maybe even half a second or maybe a tenth of a second. Uh, or something like that. Once we get past the transient response, then the steady state response is what the circuit is doing over long time frames. That's why I call it, it's called steady state, right? So for instance, if we're charging up a capacitor, the charging process, the increasing you know, uh, de deposition of charges in there and the currents and the voltages that are changing during that charging process, that might be what's called the transient response. But after all of that's done and the capacitor's charged and things aren't really changing much anymore, then the circuit has reached what we call steady state, right? Or a uh, steady state part of it. Another example might be an inductor. You know, an inductor is just a coil of wire. After a long period of time, if I put a current in inside of this coil of wire, just hook it up to it to the inductor, after maybe a few seconds, this coil of wire is going to look like a short circuit. So over a long period of time, after maybe several seconds have passed, depending on the exact circuit, this inductor might just look like a short circuit. But over short time periods, the transient response, it might behave quite differently. And, and in this section, in this set of lessons, we're going to be focusing on the transient responses of the circuit as they respond to short time frames, short duration events. But later on, we're going to get into steady state where we're talking about long duration events like AC analysis, we're going to be doing later, is kind of a steady state thing. It's what happens, you know, as you let the circuit settle out and we study that. So transient response, short time frame. That's what we're going to be studying here, steady state response. We're going to talk about that later when we get into AC analysis and, and, other, uh, and other topics. All right, next thing you're going to be seeing in your uh, book, also in this class, in your professor lecture, whatever, is something called the natural response of the circuit. And that's actually what we're going to be studying uh, very early here, very, very soon. The natural response of a circuit is generally going to be talking about what is the circuit going to do as uh, when, you, when you give some initial conditions to the circuit, so give it some current, give it some voltage, and then you disconnect all sources, you disconnect the voltage sources, and then you let the discharge process happen uh, uh, throughout the circuit. So kind of if you have to boil it down for what we're talking about here, the natural response is what's happening when the circuit discharges. That's pretty much what it is. If you have a capacitor, you've previously charged it, you've got a battery hooked up to it, and then you disconnect that battery and you let that uh, capacitor bleed off, you know, and, and kind of distribute the charges throughout the circuit. If some current comes out of that capacitor, that whole process, that discharge process, is what we call the natural response. It's called the natural response because we've disconnected it from any driving sources and we're just seeing how the circuit behaves naturally as a function of whatever resistors you have in there, whatever inductors or capacitors you have in there. When you store energy in one of these devices and then you let it bleed off into the circuit and discharge, we call that the natural response of the circuit. We're going to be devoting the first half of this set of lessons so several, several lessons to the natural response of the circuit. Finally, we have something called the step response of the circuit. The step response is when we initially hook up a voltage source or a current source to the circuit and initially you know, send some current and voltage into the circuit there and we're going to study that response. So the natural response is we're watching everything decay as it discharges and the step response really is the charging process if you have to boil it down to kind of layman's terms. So the step response would be we have a circuit, we have a capacitor here, we have a switch, we have a voltage source. I turn the switch on, connect the battery instantaneously to the capacitor, the capacitor is going to begin to charge. That's the step response. It's how does it behave to a step function of voltage or a step function, function of current. How does it charge? How fast does it charge? How long does it take to reach complete charge status? Things like that. That's called a step response. So let me run through these real quickly. This is just a general overview lesson, kind of some ideas of what we're going to be learning as we move on, and then in the next section we'll get into real circuits. So we have 
The transient response of the circuit is a general term that just means what happens to the circuit over short time frames. The charging process, the discharging process, those are both happening over short time frames. It's called the transient response of the circuit. The steady state response is what happens with the circuit after you look in long time scales. What happens after the thing's completely discharged? What happens after the thing's completely charged? When the circuit settles out to the steady state after a long period of time, maybe even a minute, minute or two in the future, how does the circuit behave? That's a term that we refer to as the steady state conditions of the circuit. All right. Then we have the natural response of the circuit. It's basically the discharge process. After we've charged something, we let it bleed into the rest of the circuit components and we study how it decays. That's called the natural response, the discharge process. Finally, we have the step response of the circuit, which is what's happening during the charging process when we just initially shut the switch let the current flow into the capacitor or the inductor, how does it charge? How does it respond to the step function of the current or voltage source that's there? That's why we call it a step response. So I want to give you these terms, and I know I've repeated myself several times, and that's on purpose, because I don't want you to, to read these and say, oh yeah, I get that, move on. I want you to understand what's a step response, what's a natural response, what's a transient response, what's a steady state response, because uh, even though my lessons, I try to make them self-consistent and very detailed, when you get to your book, you're going to be reading about these terms constantly. You need to know what a natural response is so that whenever you're, you know, you understand, okay, that's a discharge process. That's something bleeding current into a circuit. We're going to be studying how the discharge is happening. So I try to boil it down in a way that makes sense, that's easy to understand. Make sure you under, understand all this. Uh, and just know that what we're basically going to be studying in this set of lessons is the natural response of the circuit, which is the discharge process of capacitors and inductors. Then we're going to study the step response of the circuit, which is the charging process of these circuits with capacitors and inductors. So follow me on to the next section. Uh, grab a sheet of paper. Open your mind. You're going to make it as simple and as easy as possible. And I promise you that with a little practice and with a little dedication, you'll understand everything in these lessons and all of the lessons to follow.